Hey guys, good morning, Ed over here at Fickham Repair. Happy Monday to you. So, got an email from a gentleman this morning saying, Hey man, I just changed out all my sticks, all my injectors, don't you know, with brand new ones, and now I've got a circuit high coat on cylinder number five. What are the odds that it's the injector, or is it the Fickham, he asks. Well, so in response to this, what I would say is I would say that the chances of it being the injector are slim, but recognize that people have different definitions of what new means. Does new mean another one from another truck? Does new mean new from the guy down the, down the street who rebuilds them in his garage and he's just getting started? Does new mean it's an OEM Motorcraft injector? Does it mean that it's a, that it's a premium remand from, uh, from holders? You know, what does new mean? And so what I wrote back to him is I said, hey, look, man, it depends on what you mean by new. Um, you know, if it, if it is a motorcraft or, say, a holder's injector, I doubt seriously it's the injector. It's something else. But go ahead and do a continuity test. You could take your little digital voltmeter and just ohm out the pins in there and see what you got going on because a circuit high code means, hey, uh, one of these things is not like the other. We don't have continuity. It's an open and so it's like, well, hmm, so is that an injector problem? And so and if you don't know what to look for, just let's say, hey, look at this injector versus this injector. Do a couple of them and see what's going on. Or there's guides online. You know, Google's your friend here. So outside of that, I told them you could do a wiggle test. You could do a continuity test on the injector harness. And you could, on, on the four pins that, that, that slide into this bad boy. And you can look to see, hey, do you have continuity from those four pins to their brethren side on the Fickham side and say, hey, is my injector harness good or is my injector harness bad? And uh, now to do a wiggle test actually and not just a straight up continuity test actually would do it, to do it properly, you'd have to remove the harness from the vehicle because you're going to contort it every which way because a wiggle test sounds ex is exactly what it sounds like, right? You're literally wiggling the harness as you've got both sides of the digital voltmeter on there. So it's going, you know, beep the whole time. And uh, when you're wiggling it around, the beep doesn't break. It doesn't go beep, beep. It just goes beep, right? And so, just to be clear, <laughs> I know, comedic value. Oh my goodness. Thanks for your subscription. I appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed, why is that? And if you're not reposting, why is that? So I told him that. I said, hey, look, if it turns out that you do both of those things and still you're having a problem, yeah, it's going to be the Fickham. But then what I didn't get into is, well, why would it be the Fickham? And probably what it is, is that, um, that following the injector work, probably it is that whoever was cranking on the truck trying to purge the air out of the high pressure oil system did not follow protocol. So what you're supposed to do for those in the back, what you're supposed to do, and we came up with a new version of this, so pay attention. Step one, hook up the battery charger. Step two, go ahead and use the remote start engagement wire on the passenger side fender well just in front of the um, blower motor. Disconnect that little connector that's about the length of your pinky. Take the free end, touch it to the positive post of the passenger side battery, and that'll engage the starter. All that is doing is engaging the solenoid, sending voltage there and nowhere else. Perfection. So now that you've done that, now you go ahead and you have 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off, unless you want to buy a starter from me. We did have somebody say, well, I've been cranking for three minutes straight. I've been doing it forever. I haven't got a problem. Dude, I don't know. You, know, you must be living right because obviously the rest of us aren't. We've burnt up a lot of starters over the years. I don't want that for any of you guys, right? So 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off. And if you do that, if you do the 15 seconds, 45 seconds off, if you do the 15 seconds, 45 seconds off, then what will happen is you will not uh, end up burning up a starter. Yay. And you will also not send any voltage to anything but the starter. Yay. Now, the only drawback of this is you're also not sending voltage to the IPR valve, which means that, you know, half the output of the high pressure, low volume, high pressure oil pump is going right back into the oil pan. But at least you're purging the air out of the system that way. And you keep on doing this 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off until you hear the pitch change. When you hear the pitch change, you're like, aha, looky there, we have high pressure oil now. Um, Cause that's what's happening now. Now we're, we're pumping under, un, under a back pressure and it's like, oh my goodness, here we go. So then what you do is you let the batteries recover 30, 45 um, minutes, whatever it takes, putting on your charger, maybe half a day. I don't know what you got for a charger, but after your batteries have recovered, uh, and by the way, a, uh, a 15 amp push against a group size 65 battery, um, 
but you got two of them. So you're going to be at fully, fully, fully charged. Um, you should be about 13.5 volts while hooked up to your dumb, I'll call it, charger that's just saying, hey, you told me to put electrons here. I mean, I'm putting electrons here. So if it's a smart charger, that's different. Just wait until it says it's done. But if it's, a, if it's, if it's your, what I call your granddad's charger, um, there's there's reasons why that's a better charger, actually. But you have to ba babysit it more. But at, 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 at like, call it 13.5 volts under a 15 amp push that's a fully charged battery so when you have that again then go ahead and only then so you know take the wife out to dinner whatever it takes you know come back to it is the point then go ahead and um you know have the relay for the ficum pulled out he's probably done that in the beginning anyway, anyway not that it matters at that point uh but um have it pulled out but time is of the essence i, I would go ahead and pull, pull the relay out I would crank on the truck again, this time maybe for 20 seconds, because it's been sitting for like 45 minutes, for like 20 seconds. Never, By the way, never more than 30 seconds all at once, okay? Never, ever, ever, unless you want to buy a starter, in which case I sell starters. And I really like the mean grain uh, here just to say. But uh, it's awesome. But at any rate, so 20 seconds is, it might, might be what it takes. And then you can go ahead, you'll hear the pitch change again. When you hear the pitch change again, if you have gauges, now if you don't have gauges, um, let's say you don't have gauges, we'll do that first. So you don't have monitoring gauges, you don't have an Edge Insight CTS-3, you don't have an SCTX-4, you don't have a Snap-on Solos, you don't have anything. Um, if that's the case, have the relay out of the truck, Cr now crank on the truck, you know, uh, 45 seconds after you stop cranking on it with the remote starting gauge wire, now crank on the truck with the key another long enough that you see low pressure pop up on your instrument cluster, okay? And then put the relay back in, the truck should fire right up. Ideally, you would have gauges, though, and you won't have to guess. So ideally, what you'll do is you'll roll the key um, forward to the start position, that'll engage the starter of the flywheel, and you'll look for injection control pressure voltage. Not PSI, don't care about PSI, care about voltage. And you're going to look to see that it's 0 0.24, a key on engine off, 0.2 to 0.25 really, and then above 0.93 volts during cranking. And after it's above 0.93 volts during cranking, um, then pop the relay back in, roll the key again, the truck will fire right up. Now, if, you, if you're like, I don't see injection control pressure voltage, all I got is PSI, a cheat code here is you can go ahead and take a look at IPR duty cycle instead. And so when you first roll the key to the on position, it'll be between 14 and 15, very commonly 14.84, and then you're going to roll the key to, so the starter engages the flywheel, and after the starter engages the flywheel, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to see it go to 85%, but it'll back down. It'll back down in the 40s and 50s when you've established high pressure oil, actually, when ICP, injection control pressure, desired equals actual. So when that happens, okay, great, get off the key, pop the relay in, then go ahead and start the truck normally. Uh, it'll, it'll fire immediately. After it fires immediately, all risk of, uh, of uh, circuit high codes is now gone from that exercise, but there's still air in the system. Don't think there isn't. So go ahead and let the truck um, warm up to like 120, 130 degree oil, and then do something that very, very, very few people do. Take it for a spin, five minutes at 3,000 RPM or so, 2,800 to 3,200, somewhere in there. We're not talking about redline the truck. Oh my goodness, no. But go ahead and get up to 3,000 RPM for like five minutes. That'll purge every little tiny bit of air out. And that way, tomorrow morning, when you start the truck, there won't be an elongated uh, crank. It'll just start like normal, and life is good. You'll have protected your injectors, you'll have protected your ficum, you'll have protected your starter, you'll have protected your batteries. Oh my goodness, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. So you'll have done everything right, and then life is good. And hopefully when you changed out your injector, if you had to change out your injector, hopefully you did the HHC nipple cups with their corresponding O-rings, hopefully you did dummy plugs and standpipes if it's a newer one, hopefully you did just the standpipes along with those braided lines if it's an older model log, log rail style truck. So, oh my goodness, I know I talk fast. That was a lot. I had to get it in under 10 minutes. We got it done by the hair of our chinny chin chin, as they say. So at any rate, that's what Rewind is for. So go back and listen to this again. Maybe pin this video on your own, whatever, save it, whatever, and repost it. Tell your friends, hey, this was an avoidable circumstance. I doubt it was his injector. I think he killed his ficum, but it was so avoidable and it just kills me. So now that his ficum is dead, because almost for a fact it is, I may or may not know a guy. FicumRepair.com. We're almost together. Thank you, guys.